everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to be diving in to the other palettes that were launched from Lisa Eldridge. Recently, I uploaded my review of the Sorcery palette and I told you guys that I was not expecting to get my other order because long story short, if you guys didn't see that video, I actually ended up creating two orders. I bought four of the five palettes in my original order. And then once I ordered it, I thought about I thought about it for a little bit and then I decided, you know what, I can't leave Sorcery out. I went ahead and ordered the Sorcery palette along with the lip liner and the lipstick in the shade. And that order arrived pretty quickly. So I was able to get that review up, but my other order hadn't shipped yet when I put that video up. And I also got a message from Lisa Eldridge's newsletter saying that majority of the orders would not ship until the 21st. I wasn't expecting to get these palettes or be able to film with them until after Thanksgiving. And I got the notification yesterday, so today is Friday, I got the notification yesterday that they were being shipped. And I was so excited, and then when I woke up this morning it said they were out for delivery, kind of blew my mind. Because there are four more palettes for me to play with, I'm gonna divide them up into two. So in today's video, I'm going to be playing with the Muse palette, which is on this side, and also the Cinnabar palette, which I'm wearing on this side. So today's video is all about Cinnabar and the Muse palette. And then my next video will be Vega palette and the Myth palette. The reason why I'm kind of breaking them up is because you guys know I like to be quite detailed and I also like to share a ton of swatches and comparisons. So because of that, I thought it would be really confusing to have all four of the palettes into one video. So I'm breaking it up into two and I hope you guys enjoy it. I will get to the Vega and the Myth palette as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and jump into the details about these palettes. These palettes retail for $68. They do come in five different color stories. And like I mentioned in the Sorcery palette, they are refillable. But as of now, you are not able to buy the component separately to create your own curated palette. As it stands right now, you have to buy the palette either one of the five palettes. And then from there, you can buy the individual shades in the singles and put them and kind of swap them out from there. Now, from what I hear, Lisa Eldridge is considering selling these later on separately, but right now they're not available to buy separately. The packaging is really sleek and really, really beautiful. I absolutely love the packaging on these. They're so luxurious and they're just really beautiful to look at. Now, if you guys did not watch Lisa Eldridge's launch video, it's very informative. If you're interested in these palettes, I definitely recommend checking out her video. She goes into a lot of detail about each of the textures in these palettes. So she created six textures for these palettes and not all of the palettes have one of each. So for example, the Sorcery palette had three of the six textures. The Muse palette, for example, has four of the six textures. Cinnabar also has four of the six textures. So just kind of something to take note of. That's pretty much it for the intro. Let's go ahead and jump into tutorials using each one of the palettes. And in those tutorials, I kind of break down which formulas and which textures are in each one of the palettes so that you guys kind of know. And then we will get into the swatches and comparisons. And I'm gonna swatch both the Muse and the Cinnabar next to a bunch of other palettes that I have in my collection so you guys can see these color stories and how they compare to a lot of the other palettes that we have in our collection. Then we will go ahead and jump into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into these two palettes. I'm so excited and very surprised that my order actually arrived this quick. Cinnabar, I'll be honest with you, was probably the palette that I was most excited about because these tones look really pretty against blue eyes. It's kind of the opposite of the color wheel, right? So it really makes the blue eyes pop. So again, you have the little protector. So this is Cinnabar. This palette contains two seamless mattes, two metallics, one velvet, 
and one top coat shade. So this one has a little bit more of a mixture of the six textures. First shade in the palette is Raw Sienna, and that's one of the seamless mattes. The second shade is Bronzite, and it is one of the metallic shades. The third shade is Fired Earth, which is the other seamless matte. The fourth shade is Lost Summer, which is another metallic. The fifth shade is Deep Ochre, and that is a velvet shade. And then we have Ritual, which is a top coat shade. We're gonna go ahead and dive in and create a look using the palette. I'm so excited. Now, she also mentioned that this velvet formula, you can apply with your finger, and it's very creamy to the touch. So, as you can see, I just stuck my finger in there, and that's definitely creamy, look at that. That is really creamy. So the velvet, in my opinion, feels a little creamier to the touch. The seamless matte feels a little bit more textured, but still, you can see they both have a shine to them. So this is the velvet, this is the seamless matte. You can see they have a shine to them. Now this top coat shade, there's not a lot to it. So this one right here, and I really hope it doesn't get hard panned because you can kind of see as I've stuck my finger in it to swatch it. I hope it doesn't. I'm gonna grab a crease brush and I'm gonna go into the first shade. And I wanna see if this shade shows up on my complexion, like in the crease, if it gives me any dimension and if it builds on top of itself. So that's like one layer of it. Let's see if I'm able to build it up. So that shade for me is pretty close to kind of my skin tone. I mean, it's obviously a little darker, but it's not really building dimension. And it's one that I kind of keep packing on and it doesn't really build on itself. So just something to kind of take a note of. Now I'm gonna go into this one right here. This one I'm excited about. So even though the first shade doesn't really show up on my skin tone, if you're lighter than me, that's going to be a really good transition shade for you. These mattes are some of the easiest mattes to blend. They kind of remind me of the Charlotte Tilbury Super Nudes. If you guys are um, familiar with the Super Nudes palette, it's a cream texture, but I feel like the Super Nudes from Charlotte Tilbury, you get a little bit more fallout than I'm experiencing with Lisa Eldridge's palette. I'm gonna I'm... now grab this shade right here and I'm gonna bring that here on the inner corner and also the outer corner. Look at the richness that that pigment has. There's no dust, there's no kick up, there's no nothing. Like, it's just really, really smooth and very forgiving on wrinkles and stuff. Really pretty. I'm gonna now grab my Smith 253 and I'm gonna go into this shade. And it's a metallic, and yes, I would probably get a better application if I used my finger, but because I want a more precise application and I have nails, it's a little bit harder for me. So I'm just gonna use a brush. I would say that this shade, just based on applying it, is very similar to a Natasha Denona metallic. Like, it's kind of similar to some of the metallics that we have in the bronze palette from Natasha Denona, but it doesn't have any fallout. I mean, it doesn't really have that much chunk to it. Just like my experience with the Sorcery palette. So now I want to go into this top coat shade. I want to see what that kind of looks like right there on the center. So I'm just going to take my brush that's not dampened. I'm just going to pick it up like that. I'm going to put it right in the center. Very, very, very mild impact. Like a very soft subtle impact. So that, even though it is kind of a top coat shade, it's really, really uh, toned down. It's not, you know, like for example, the new Makeup by Mario Ethereal palette, those three shades down that second row, they have that 
really sparkly pearlescent look to them. This is just on a very soft intensity. So I wanna right. take a small brush, like a smudge brush, and I'm gonna go into this dark shade right here. I wanna kinda tap this in to this outer corner. Ooh, that is a lot of pigment. And I'm gonna bring it right at the base of the lashes, like on the inner corner, just to give a little bit of depth. I'm gonna use a flat definer brush and kind of blend this out a little bit. I did get a little bit of fallout from that dark mat. So that's the first time I experienced any of the fallout. So I really didn't get any fallout from the other two mats, nor did I get a lot of fallout from the shimmer. I maybe got a little bit in my lashes, you can kind of see there. Okay, so I just went ahead and put on some concealer and I literally took a brush like this faded away instantly. I'm gonna go directly into this shade right here. I have a feeling this is gonna be my favorite shade in the palette. I can just already tell by the way it is, you know? It's got that perfect color to it, blends easily, and it's just a good color for the tones in the palette. I am gonna take a flat definer and I'm gonna go into this dark shade and just put it right at the base of my lashes. So I went ahead and threw on a little bit of mascara, but for those of you who have the lipstick in the shade Cinnabar, I'm gonna show you what it looks like with this eye look. Cinnabar is one of my favorites from Lisa Eldridge. And obviously it looks a little bit weird just because I don't have any makeup on besides my eyes, but I just wanted you guys to see it and it's pretty together, it is. It actually makes this a little bit more red against this coppery eye. It just makes it a little, it looks a little redder, right? I don't know, maybe it's just me, but that's it for the look using the Cinnabar palette. Let's go ahead and jump into the Muse palette. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the Muse palette. Same packaging, I just got my fingerprints all over it, but same as the Sorcery palette, it has the Lisa Eldridge logo on the inside, and then they all have this little black protector, and the palette slides out. And they also have the inside protector, the little plastic protector. This is like really feminine, with like the really pretty mauve tones. This is really a pretty palette. I am excited about this one. And it's warmer as well. I am excited. That's kind of why I chose Cinnabar and Muse together because they're both kind of warm tones. The first shade is Tea Room, which is a velvet. The second shade is Tomorrow's Party, which is a metallic. The third shade is Vintage Mulberry, which is a velvet. The fourth shade is Love and Venus, which is a luminous. The fifth shade is Cherubim, which is a velvet shade. And the sixth shade is Taffeta, fan, which is a luster. So those are the shades swatched. This palette feels very feminine to me and I'm really excited to play with it. She does mention that the velvet mattes, you can pretty much just apply them with your finger. It is very hard for me to use my fingers just because of my nails, it just is. But because I know a lot of you would probably love to apply it with your finger, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna take my finger into this shade right here and just kind of maybe use it as a base just to see how it applies, you know? Oh, that shade is really pretty, right? It is really creamy to the touch, it is. So this palette does not have the seamless matte. So this palette has all three velvets, no seamless mattes. And to be completely honest with you, I'm not really finding a huge difference between the Seamless Matte and the Velvet. They're both quite creamy. I don't know, I'm gonna have to continue to play with it. I haven't really noticed a huge difference, but I'm keeping my eye out for it. Now I'm going to dip my brush into this shade. Gosh, these mattes are so, so easy to use. 
so easy to use, you guys. Like, they really are so simple. That's what they remind me of. Like, you don't have to put a lot of thought into it. They're just really easy to blend. You don't ever have any harsh lines. That's what I'm noticing with both the velvet and the seamless matte. They're both extremely easy to use. You just don't have to work hard. So now I'm trying to decide which formula I wanna use as far as the shimmers because I have only one metallic in this palette and I have a luminous shade which is like more of a semi-transparent. So this metallic has obviously got more to it, right? This one right here, this is a luminous and it's more semi-transparent. And because the only other luminous shade I used was in Sorcery and it was a duochrome. This one's not really duo, it's like a luminous duo. This is just a luminous. So I'm just gonna try it. So. I'm gonna take my Smith 253 brush and I'm gonna go in to the shade because I have a lighter base down, right? So I use that lighter shade as kind of a base. So let's see what this looks like on top of it. So it's definitely what she says it is, more semi-transparent, meaning that the metallic shade has more pigment. It's got more opacity. This is definitely less opaque and just kind of gives you a little bit of shimmer. Now I'm gonna grab this shade, which that shade is a luster. This is the first time I've used a luster, so. I think I'm gonna bring that maybe up and into the crease like this, the luster shade. Kind of putting over top. So now I'm gonna go into this dark shade. And I'm also going to bring a little bit of that into this crease. Before I put concealer on, I'm gonna dip my brush into this shade just for fun and put it here on the outer corner over top of the mattes. Just to kind of give a little bit of that. Why not, right? I'm gonna go into this shade now and bring this on the lower lash line. I am gonna take a smudge brush and go into this darker shade. The velvet matte definitely feels more creamier to the touch, it does. You kind of think it's gonna be more powdery, but it really doesn't feel that way. It feels really creamy. Okay, so I'm back. I went ahead and threw on the rest of my makeup. I went ahead and threw on the lip liner and the lipstick in the shade Sorcery. It's a new part of her collection. And I think this lipstick goes with both eye looks. Like if I cover, especially Cinnabar, it looks really good with Cinnabar palette. I know that this is sold out. Um, so it's my understanding that restocks will happen after the new year, but it's a great shade and I, it's one of my new favorites. Cinnabar, Muse, and now Sorcery are my two, are my three favorites. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the swatches. I'm going to swatch these two palettes next to other palettes that I have that are similar in tone. And then once we get through the swatch, the comparisons, I will go ahead and jump into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then.
Okay, everyone, I am back to give my final thoughts on these two palettes. I do hope that those swatches and comparisons were helpful. My hand is completely stained from <laughs> swatching all of those shades. <laughs> I know there was a lot of swatches, so I do hope that those were helpful. Cause these color stories are a little bit more redundant, right? Like we probably have a lot of these color stories in our collection. I wanted to share as many as I could just so you guys could get an idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my favorite formula so far in the palettes. I absolutely love the seamless mattes and the velvets. They are fantastic. In fact, they're very similar to the new cream formula from Tom Ford. So if you are familiar with the cream eyeshadow palettes, the cream quads from Tom Ford, and you like that formula, you will love these formulas. They are so easy to blend. And I love the way that they give the eyelid some shine and they give the crease a little bit of shine. It is one of those cream formulas that you can layer and it does build dimension. You can only build it so far because it does have that cream texture, but they are fantastic. So user friendly. I'm not a huge fan of Natasha Denona's cream powder formula, which you'll find those in a lot of her palettes. It doesn't build very well and you can't really layer it, and it almost has a little bit too much shine. It's just not my personal favorite, but I know that a lot of people love that formula. I'm, I'm a little picky with my creamy powder formulas, and Lisa's are fantastic, both the velvet and the seamless mattes. They're just so easy to work with, so easy to blend. You never have to worry about getting harsh lines, so user-friendly, like anyone can use them, and create beautiful looks with them, right? So it's not a super complicated formula where it's super pigmented and you have to work really hard to blend it out. And I also love that it has the right emollient base to it to give the shine, but it still is not too much to the point where it really doesn't build levels of depth. So let so me go ahead and start with the Cinnabar palette. I wish this shade was a little bit darker because if you're a medium skin tone, if you're like medium to tan, this won't probably show up on you. It really doesn't. Like even when I swatched it on my arm, it doesn't, it kind of blends into my skin. This shade is not that spectacular because, and the reason why I say that is because when you spend $68, it's almost like you need all of them to be, right? This one is just not a lot of anything. It's just, it's just not, it's so faint and so light. I just wish it had a little bit more to it. I wish that it had a little bit more of a pack of punch to it. You can barely see it here on my hand, right? I don't really love that. It's not my favorite. That one is in the shade Ritual. It's a top coat. So that is her top coat formula. And I understand the philosophy behind just adding the smallest amount of intensity of a shine. So because I, when I think of a top coat, I'm thinking of a pop of something, right? Like for example, in our Charlotte Tilbury quads, those pop shades, they have that sparkle to them. Or even Wayne Goss has them in his palettes. Uh, the new Ethereal Eyes from Makeup by Mario, those three shadows down uh, the center. They're really pretty top coat shades. This one is a little lackluster and I wish it had a little bit more to it because you can even, you can't even see it on my hand. And even when I popped it here on the center of the lid, it didn't make that much of a difference. In fact, even if I go in with my finger like this, you're just not gonna notice much. Like it just doesn't make enough difference to be in a $68 palette. Because these are so pricey, I'm gonna point it out. And I wish that that shade had more pizzazz to it, just even a little bit. Because our formulas are so good, I was excited about the top coat formula, just to kind of see how it would look and it was not my favorite, it's not. Just based on the way that it feels when you swatch it, it feels a little different. And I feel like every time I dip my finger in it, I'm getting less and less, that's what I feel like. It's like every single time I put my finger in that shade, I'm getting less and less and less. So it's just not my favorite and spending $68 on something that has a shade that I'm not super in love with, I don't know if it's worth it, right? I like this palette, but I think I like it mostly because of the seamless mattes in it. 
and I could kind of give or take the shimmers in this. They're okay, but they're not anything that I don't already have, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. Here's the thing, there are some positives with this palette though, because if you're someone that just loves an easy eyeshadow palette that is not super sparkly and not really um, loud, but just very calm and smooth and sophisticated, you will love this palette and also the Muse because the Muse is kind of the same way. Even though the metallics in this in this palette are a little bit stronger than the ones in the Muse, I would say that this is the least intense out of the three. This is just a very soft, soft palette. These are very similar to the formulas in the Sorcery palette where you they don't have a lot of chunk to them. If you are someone that likes a, just a very easy, sophisticated eyeshadow formula that's very user-friendly, that's not super sparkly, that's not super chunky, these are like right up your alley. Like you will absolutely love these palettes and you will probably reach for them over a Natasha Denona, a Pat McGrath, um, you know, Sydney Grace, like some of those that are really, really pigmented and super strong shimmers, right? They're gonna fit a particular need. I don't think everybody's gonna love, especially these two. And this one is, I would say, more soft on the eye. And you really can't build a lot of depth with this. Like, you can probably build a little bit of depth if you have a lighter skin tone than I do. So there are some pros and cons, but if you are someone that really loves Pat McGrath, and you like strong shimmers, and you like your eyelids to really sparkle, these palettes are probably not what I would recommend. So it's all gonna depend on what you like. I think some people are going to absolutely love them, and I think other people might be a little disappointed that they're not as sparkly as they were hoping it were, they were going to be, or they're not as, you know, they're, they're not as shimmery. And so I'm really curious to hear how you guys are feeling about these two palettes. But again, as far as I'm concerned, the Seamless Matte and the Velvets, they are the star of the show of these two palettes. That's just my personal opinion. I love them. And like I said, I will be uploading my video of the Myth and the Vega palette as soon as I can. Today's Friday, so I won't be able to film possibly until Sunday or Monday, but I will get that video up as soon as possible. I have a house full, I have like, seven people coming to my house for Thanksgiving and I have a shit ton of stuff to do this weekend to try to prepare for that. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to film. I'll just see if I can pop it in, we'll just see. But anyway, I hope that this video is helpful. Sound off down below. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you, bye. <laughs>